Imagine standing in the heart of Europe, 40,000 years ago. The landscape around you is rugged and untamed, a place of harsh, relentless cold where food is difficult to come by, and any modern convenience like the internet is unheard of. Suddenly, from the shadows of the dense forest, a figure emerges. This being is stocky, with a sturdy build and a face unlike any you've seen before. Their brow is heavy, their nose broad, and their body looks as though it was designed by nature itself to withstand the elements. Congratulations, you're face to face with a Neanderthal. At first glance, you might assume this Neanderthal is just an ancient version of us. But that's not entirely accurate. While we both belong to the genus Homo, we modern humans are exclusively Homo sapiens. Neanderthals, on the other hand, were a distinct species known as Homo neanderthalensis, and they were more complex and resourceful than we often give them credit for. But what happened to them? Neanderthals thrived for an impressive 360,000 years, with populations spread across Europe and parts of Asia. Yet around 40,000 years ago, disaster struck southern Europe. Beneath what is now southern Italy, a massive supervolcano known as Campi Flagre lay dormant. This colossal volcanic field, about nine miles across, is a sleeping giant that can take 10 to 20 minutes to cross by car today, but back then, there were no cars, of course. For a long time, it was still. Then, in one fateful moment, Campi Flagre exploded in one of the largest eruptions Europe had witnessed in over 200,000 years. The eruption's impact on the environment was catastrophic. Ash, gases, and debris filled the atmosphere, triggering a drastic shift in the climate. Temperatures across Europe plummeted, leading to what is called a volcanic winter. This severe cooling altered weather patterns, blanketing the continent with darkened skies and harsher winters. Even a single degree of cooling would have had a profound impact, making winters more severe, with heavier snowfalls, icy rains, and devastating floods. Crops would struggle to grow, and food supplies dwindled, while intense storms further battered the land. For the Neanderthals, who were already struggling for survival, these harsh conditions marked a turning point. Yet, despite its devastation, this volcanic eruption alone wasn't the sole cause of their extinction. Neanderthals had been hanging by a thread long before the eruption, and the primary reason was the arrival of another formidable competitor, us. Modern humans, Homo sapiens, had made their way into Europe and began competing with Neanderthals, for vital resources like food and shelter. Adaptable and inventive, Homo sapiens had superior tools and strategies that allowed them to outmaneuver Neanderthals in this race for survival. This competition wasn't just an inconvenience for Neanderthals, it marked the beginning of a slow but steady decline for their species. The eruption of Campi Flagre made matters worse but didn't wipe out the Neanderthals instantly. Some groups held on, surviving in isolated regions like Gibraltar for another 12,000 years. Remarkably, many scientists now believe that the most severe effects of the eruption, particularly the chilling volcanic winter, affected areas farther east, sparing some of the Neanderthal habitats. Ironically, this catastrophe might have even bought Neanderthals a little more time by slowing down the expansion of modern humans into their territories. However, this relief was temporary, and the Neanderthals' days were numbered. Campi Flagre is infamous for more than just this one eruption. Known as the Fields of Fire, this volcanic region has a storied history steeped in legend. Ancient Greeks and Romans believed it to be a portal to the underworld, a fitting association given the eerie and volatile landscape. Even the Roman poet Virgil mentioned this place in the Aeneid, where his hero Aeneas journeys to the underworld, beginning his descent precisely here. The land, dotted with Roman villas, luxurious spas, and tranquil fish ponds, was once a playground for the Roman elite, 
unaware that their leisure paradise, sat atop one of nature's most dangerous time bombs. Unlike the towering peaks most people envision when they think of volcanoes, Camp Eiffel Grey looks surprisingly serene, with rolling hills, craters, and small volcanic cones blending into the landscape. But beneath this calm exterior, the ground is anything but stable. Every so often, the land subtly rises and falls, shifting by several feet as magma, and gas shift under the Earth's crust. This quiet, almost invisible movement masks a simmering danger. Camp Eiffel Grey isn't a single volcanic peak but a vast caldera, a massive depression formed by two cataclysmic eruptions. One of these eruptions was the one that tormented the Neanderthals, while another major eruption occurred roughly 15,000 years ago. In the 16th century, Camp Eiffel Grey erupted again, this time giving rise to Monte Nuovo, the new mountain. People in nearby Pozzuoli noticed unsettling changes in the early 1530s. Land that had once been underwater began rising, creating new ground. Earthquakes rattled the area for years, starting small but growing in intensity. Then, on the evening of September 29, 1538, a massive fissure opened in the earth, spewing fire, smoke, and a rain of volcanic ash across the region. Residents fled in terror as the earth heaved, and volcanic rock was launched high into the air. By the end of this terrifying event, Monte Norvo had emerged from the ground, a testament to the earth's violent forces. In the centuries that followed, Monte Norvo settled into relative dormancy, its slopes now covered in green vegetation. But Camp Eiffel Grey has never truly gone quiet. The entire region near Naples still shows signs of life. Bobbling mud pools, steaming geysers, and hot springs dot the area, giving it an otherworldly feel. The Romans and medieval Christians believed it to be an entrance to the underworld, and perhaps they weren't far from the truth. In recent years, scientists have noticed renewed activity beneath Camp Eiffel Grey. In 2012, the Italian government raised its alert level from green to yellow, signaling that the volcano needed close monitoring. Magma shifting below the surface can release gases that may weaken the rock above, potentially setting the stage for another eruption. Scientists working on the Camp Eiffel Grey deep drilling project are investigating the magma chamber below, hoping to better understand this unpredictable force of nature. While no one can say for sure when, or if, Camp Eiffel Grey will erupt again, the consequences could range from a minor disturbance for locals to a worldwide disaster. A large-scale eruption could plunge the world into a cooling period, disrupt agriculture, and trigger widespread food shortages. For now, Camp Eiffel Grey slumbers beneath Naples, its quiet presence a reminder of the Earth's power. The last minor eruption was centuries ago, but history has shown that this supervolcano is anything but predictable. Let's hope it remains peaceful for a long time. If you enjoyed this journey through time and nature's fury, remember to share this video, give it a thumbs up, and hit subscribe for more explorations. And stay tuned for more insights, there's a whole universe out there to discover.